And first of all, I'd like to say thanks so much for all the nice comments that were made about my previous videos. I really appreciate them. So I decided to make another one. So this time I'll be covering a large terracotta pot with fabric. So if you're interested in seeing how I'll do that, stay tuned. Old plant pots can be made quite interesting covering them with fabric or painting them. And if you seal them well enough, they are also quite durable and can be um, left outside. I prefer using terracotta pots. The rims or the opening of the pots are smoother, um, enabling it to be easier to mold the fabric to the inside of the pot, giving you a nice, clean, professional finish. This is an old garden pot I've had outside for um, ever. I've cleaned it up as best I can, and I think it's time for this old girl to get a makeover. What you will need is craft glue and a waterproof liquid sealer that you can add to the glue. I use maybe two parts glue, one part liquid sealer. That seals the pot so that the liquid, when you're watering your plant, doesn't seep through and ruin your fabric. When I'm all finished, I then seal it again with this polyacrylic sealer. You can get indoor or outdoor. This pot is going to go under cover, so I've used indoor acrylic sealer. You also need an old paintbrush, some old scissors, and some old pins. Make sure to use old pins because the glue will rust your pins. I then use the back of an old spoon to smooth out the bubbles and wrinkles, and the spoon really helps um, with smoothing the fabric onto the terracotta pot. Then, of course, your fabric. Pick a very busy print. The busier, the easier you'll find because you can cover up your mistakes and your cuts and um, adjustments with first I am giving the pot um, the entire pot a complete seal both inside and out in fact I actually give it two coats and I paint the inside of this pot black to aid in stopping the water from seeping through the pot and ruining my fabric remember it's two part craft glue one part concrete seal bond once the sealer is dry, place your fabric around your pot to make sure you have enough fabric to go around the widest part of the pot. Um, you want to put the straightest grain of the fabric on the widest part, so therefore that will have the least amount of wrinkles. I ran out of glue, so I had to resort to my old paper mache glue and added a bit of flour and water to stretch what I had. Just start um, placing your glue on the pot and sticking the fabric as you go. After you've applied a significant amount of glue to sort of get started, sort of find, roughly find the middle of your fabric, um, stick it to the pot, and then sort of best you can secure the open ends um, together just so you can work at the center. As you can see, I'm not having the easiest of time securing this fabric, but it doesn't really matter because you're going to be pulling that apart and re-gluing and cutting and re-gluing over and over. So just sort of get yourself situated so that you can start from the center of the fabric and work your way out. Continue to add glue and smooth the fabric around the center of the pot, the widest part of the pot, as you go. Just keep gluing and smoothing. As the width of the pot gets smaller, you will have excess fabric. Here I am cutting into the pattern on the fabric. I'm going to cut around one of the shapes. That's why I say use busy fabric. I've chosen one of the, sh the shapes on the print. I'm going to cut it open and then I can slide the excess fabric into the hole that I've just made. So I will glue the excess fabric and smooth the flap on top, um, creating basically a dart and being, allowing me to smooth the fabric as I go down to a narrow, narrower part of the pot. I continue to glue the pot, put, place glue on the pot, 
and then smooth the fabric as I go around. Remember I'm working on one side of the fabric. I started from the middle. Soon I will get to the end of one side of the pot. Then I will go back and do the same thing the other way um, until I get both edges that come that meet each other. I don't glue the edges that meet each other down on top of each other because as you will soon see I'm going to cut around the print so that you can't see where the where the where the fabric ends basically. Now I'm just removing excess fabric from the bottom of the pot. Sorry you can't see it but I'm by myself and uh, my hands are full of glue and I don't want to touch my tablet and mess it up. But basically I'm just removing the excess fabric from the bottom of the pot. Now I'm starting on the other side doing the same thing as I did on the first side. Smoothing the fabric around on the widest part of the pot so at least the middle of the pot will be smooth. I should have mentioned earlier to use a nice um, firm woven fabric because the glue will soften your fabric a bit and you're going to be tugging on it a little bit so you want something strong enough to hold up. As you saw I pinned the fabric to itself around the pot covering the entire pot. Now I'm going back and cutting into the print of the fabric so I can conceal the excess fabric. I'm searching out parts of the fabric that have a busy print, a busy design, using the design print to open up the fabric and s smooth the excess fabric in behind the open um, cut and then gluing the design back on top, concealing my cut. Basically, you just keep going around, finding excess fabric and trying your best to get away, get rid of it until the fabric molds to the shape of the pot. As you can see here, I had too much fabric to get, a, to get rid of. So I've just cut all the excess fabric away, creating a hole. I'm going to glue the fabric down as smoothly as I can. And then from my excess fabric that I cut away from the bottom of the pot earlier, I'm just going to cut out one of these circle shapes and glue it on top, covering the hole entirely. That's why I say use a very busy um, print to help cover up all your cuts and, and smooth cuts and wrinkles. Continue in this fashion, cutting around the shapes of your print, whatever your print is, it could be flowers, it could be geometrics, anything. Cutting around the shapes, creating a slit so that you can remove the excess fabric, smoothing it and gluing it to the shape of the pot. And then using that shape that you cut around to glue on top um, to cover and conceal the slit you made. Watch the front. 
to the end. The right side of my fabric is glued smoothly to my pot. I am now gluing the left side on top of that, overlapping the two fabrics. Remember I've cut my the end of the fabric around the design in a sort of diagonal um, shape so that you're not cutting in a straight line so that you can't see where the fabric ends or one fabric ends and the next begins. Cutting it around the design in a willy-nilly fashion will cover up the ending of your fabric. Glue it, smooth it, use the back of your spoon, smash it as much as you can, get as many of the wrinkles out as you can, and um, continue just smoothing with your spoon. I have cut around the inside of the fabric. As you see, I've molded it to the rim of my pot. I've cut around the inside of the fabric. I usually try to cut below the dirt line so you really can't see the inside of the fabric. Now I'm ready to do the bottom. Lay down some cling wrap or plastic so that your pot won't stick to your surface and do the same as you did on the top. Cutting the fabric, removing the excess, and overlaying your design on top of your cuts, concealing your wrinkles and your holes. Sorry about the bad lighting. It's nighttime now and my studio just isn't as light as it is in the daytime. But I'm doing the same exact thing I was doing in the daytime. Cutting, gluing, and smashing with the spoon, creating a smooth mold around the pot. Once the pot is completely dry, I take my blow dryer and the back of the spoon, warming up the glue, the dry glue a bit, and enabling, which enables me to um, smooth out any wrinkles I might have missed. You're not going to get rid of every single wrinkle. You can't be that precious, but you can get rid of most of them, and from a distance you don't really see them. Now it's time for the final seal. I seal the pot again with the glue and sealer mixture. No flour this time. Your flour will make your pot dry white. You want a clear finish. So this is just pure craft glue and the waterproof sealer. Once the glue is completely dry, then seal it with a permanent clear sealer. You can use the, either use an interior one or an exterior one. I would now give it two coats. Now I'm just going to seal it. This is a poly acrylic protective finish. I bought the interior one because I'm putting this on my front porch so it will be undercover and I don't have to worry about it. But if you're going to put yours outside, buy an exterior um, sealer to protect your product. And you just put this on and that's it.